The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. Each and every word of our Lord God Almighty is given in a written form. The living word, now in the written word, is really so much important that we cannot really compare it to the most valuable and precious things that this earth can think and count that it is worthy for us to do this it is worthy for us to live for it as comparison to the worldly things the word of the lord for every word is so much important for us to take it seriously in our hearts and we need to understand them and apply it to the process of practical living so that our lord and savior jesus christ might be glorified because of his great sacrificial death, the great sacrificial death of life, which our Lord has tasted, the grace of death, purely for the sake of us. Dear brethren, these great lessons which have been pending for us every day, being taught for us, we need to know what is that which our Lord has recorded and kept for us. We should be eager enough to unveil the things, what it meant to say in the original Greek, in the original Hebrew. We should be very much eager enough to hold forth the glory of Lord to the maximum. Not by just singing and dancing the way these people they are thinking to practice in the pulpits, but by handling the word of the Lord accurately and every believer honoring the word of the Lord when they could really live to the praise of the glory of Jehovah. Dear brethren, these things are very much important for us. These things are very much essential for us. We are here living not for any other reasons, but for to rightly divide the word of the truth and to rightly honor the word of the truth. But many men who have come to the pulpit have really lost the great value, the great significance of Bible doctrine. As our Lord told very clearly for us, the man being a head of a woman, so Christ is a head of his body, therewith he definitely protects it. In order to protect it, he has given in every generation faithful pastor teachers, irrespective of the maximum apostatized Christendom that we are living in this era, our Lord has faithfully reserved and kept certain men who could rightly divide the word of the Lord and who could rightly teach the word of the truth. Dear brethren, they were the times of Jews. They were really not worthy enough. They were the discipliners of imprudent ones. And they were teachers of the babies. But we are now being called not to be the teachers of babies, but rather to this holy, blameless generation whom our Lord has given for us in this Alekene Ketesis, being according to the species of Christ. Our Lord is Alekene Ketesis. We are new creation because our Lord came not into the realm of all sin nature, but he came purely into the realm of rightly dividing the word of the Lord under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being born in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Our Lord came in that realm and our Lord has given for us a volition test, a requirement and a satisfaction, a rest us, and he has required for us to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the first condition and he is satisfied only when we grow up to the maximum glorification of Christ as we grow up into the spiritual self-esteem and then spiritual autonomy and then look back and come back into spiritual maturity. This is of a very great lesson, dear brethren, and many people definitely neglect this great value. Therefore, we need to learn to understand from the Gospel of John chapter 7, when our Lord has told, on the day of Sabbath, you want to go for circumcision, how much more it would be that I have healed a man on the day of circumcision, I have made him sound again. Sound again in the sense we may think about literal physical sickness there. But here we are occupying something more to be spiritual. How our sicknesses will go. When we are walking uprightly in the word of the Lord, then our sicknesses will go. When we hear and obey his truth. The circumcision is a process of entrance, entering you into the works and the words of Lord God Almighty. Therefore, now we are going to live a life that is worthy to Christ. That was the process of the law and none could fulfill that law. 
and our Lord is asking a question for them. On the day of Sabbath, you think it is better for you to get circumcised and to enter into these rituals. But I am saying to you on the same day, I have made someone absolutely clear and sound. Which is more better? They are taking an entrance into the circumcision of their, of their organs so that they could now live a life which could be sound and holy for Christ. But I have made him once again whole. What for? So that the sicknesses have been gone. When the sicknesses have been gone, it went to say, now at least he will live a life that is worthy to God. Why do sicknesses come to us? The five cycles of discipline in Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26. Why do, five, why do these sicknesses attack upon us? Because we are neglecting the word of the Lord. Our thinking gets corrupted. Our thinking doesn't have the strength. Our thinking doesn't have the reality of the word. When you can consult a doctor for you so that you could be strong enough to the stresses and the strains, in my country, India, they will suggest you eat at least one almond per day. That one almond per day can cause you to get out and get up into all the things and really cures you all of your diseases. If one almond per day can clearly cleanse you out so much of your diseases, physically, that's what the people believe. How much more every word of my Lord, which is alive and powerful, could cleanse us out? Every word of the Lord being so alive and powerful, how much strength it is going to give to your body? How much strength it is going to be vigored in your spirit, in your soul. That's what the order is in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. The human mind on this earth thinks about body, soul and spirit. But the spiritual mind through the mental ministry of God, God, the Holy Spirit through Apostle Paul teaches to us first priority your spirit, then your soul and then your body should be blameless before God. What a great lessons we are going to learn from these things. Even the garments in Ezekiel 42, 12 to 14 tells, when they touch, and an, when a an common person touches those garments, you are not lo no longer to wear them again. And our Lord says in Revelation 2, in comparison to those subjects, very clearly he teaches us a great lesson and he tells to us, to the principal point of application of the word, how much more pure you need to be in your garments, not to be defiled, not to have miano. The filth of man. And you need to keep it pure. Garments need not to be defiled because you are a priest. Apostle Paul tells you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with all Therefore your spirit, soul and body should not be defiled because you are now a new creation. You are having the polity of privileges. You are no longer XYZ but you are rather a great one which is royal family of God. You are not like the Old Testament saints, nor you are like the future millennium believers, but you are a very special species in Christ. Therefore, he says, keep blameless your spirit, soul, and body. How all these things can happen? When we are grieving in our sicknesses, when we are being worried in our sicknesses, is that the way? Why many are weak, sick, and among dead? Because they have not participated in the Lord's communion table with properly judging themselves. That's the only simple reason. Many are weak, sick, and even up to the point of death because they have not judged themselves and they have participated in the Lord's table. If that alone is so pure, then what is Lord's table? Lord's table is nothing but the true bread, the true life, the true spiritual realm of God. And many are taking and participating in that, you have to be very careful that you are living a life that which has to be pleased to Jehovah. And you are keeping poeo, a one quality which has been produced by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has its own independent existence, irrespective of any things that could be tested again. Why these things? Why we need to participate in the Lord's table? Because you should know what is true life in Christ. What is true worthy in Lord? What is that which is due unto the glory of Jehovah? That is what you and I should know. But what are we doing? We just come weekly once, put your hands on your table. And now they want to pray the first century revival. If the first century revival they want to pray, every day should be the bread breaking. In your homes, at least privately. If not, you can get along into the church. Any believer can start the Eucharist. It is not only through the pastor. 
because every believer has that right. But how? When he judges himself and confesses his sins to Lord God, the Father in heaven. And no other work, no other procedure, no other method, no other gimmicks, no other tricks. When you do it, Lord knows what are your infirmities and he cleanses you out. He wants that which is due unto his glory. He will take that which is unto his glory. And he will prepare you for his work. Marvelously. But many men don't want to take these things. We know that. Men want to live upon those things which is not right. That's why many are weak, sick, and unto the point of death. That's why our Lord told in John 7, I made him whole again. I made him sound again. He made him sound in respect of his physical and spiritual infirmities. You take your circumcision so that now you could, inf so that you could come out from your spiritual infirmities by the daily intake of the law and practice it and live a holy life. And if you are failing to be, then sicknesses will add upon you. That's the simple principle of logic behind that verse. And our Lord says, already I have made a man whole, and you are thinking that I have devil with me, I have demon with me, and you are going to kill me for this. You people take circumcision so that you should now become like that man who became sound. Sound in health, and it has to be spiritually as well. It's a process. Now today baptism they take for what? Salvation. It is wrong. Baptism is a process where you have been telling to Lord, Lord, I am going to commit myself unto thee. Commit in the sense to die like a martyr unto thee. For me to live Christ, to live Christ and to die is profitable. That's what the process should be. But what are we doing? We are changing that to salvation, which is no way concerned to salvation as baptism. Even when John the Baptist started the baptism, even our Lord when he has taken the baptism, he is showing for us your commitment. He is showing for us the one who have truly repented. They only were been given baptism through John the Baptist. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells, this baptism I am taking so that the righteousness of Lord should be fulfilled. What was the righteousness of Lord? We meant to say we are now faithful to Christ. We meant to say we are now faithful to our Lord. And we are going to fulfill that which is due unto His glory, no matter what it comes. But we are not interested in all of these things, changing that verse to salvation and telling that, if you take baptism, your reservation ticket has been confirmed, and you can go to heaven now. Not by works. By faith alone in Christ alone. Now, Apostle Paul tells in Galatians 2.16, If it were by works, then no faith. If it is by faith, then, then no works. Because, faith, because works cannot justify you. It is not just to be justified with works. Baptism taking is a work. Nailing to yourself on the cross is a work. Even the thief on the cross never could come down to take baptism to be saved. We have only one thing, belief, 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 faith, faith, faith. Faith alone in Christ alone. That is what the word of the Lord teaches to us. But men have changed that gimmick into salvation process, which is no way concerned. As this man takes the circumcision on the day of Sabbath, if any believer takes baptism, it is to tell to Lord God the Father, I am going to heal now my physical infirmities. When I am healing first my spiritual infirmities through thy word. And when I am obeying to thy word and daily intake of Bible doctrine. Because it is a living and powerful word in me which operates through the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Then I am going to achieve that maximum glorification of Christ without having any breakdowns in my life. Without having any sicknesses in my life. But people don't want to learn this doctrine, we know that. Satan can sponsor you anything or everything, but not doctrine, dear brethren. That's why the word has become for many people obscured. That's why the word has not been, been revealed to them, because they have not loved my Lord with a true and a purposeful heart. That is the main problem with the Christendom of believers today. Pastor teacher joins the church. For what? For his belly to be fulfilled. Believers come to the church for what? As if they are really following the rituals of Jehovah. That's it. And they don't have any other thing than that to be done in Christ, in our Lord. Why these things, dear brethren? 
these things have been given for us so that we could be stabilizing the name of the Lord God Almighty on this earth and give unto him that glory which is due unto him because he has bestowed upon us so much and we cannot stay and tell the Lord no I will do next next time I will do in the next life no right now today today is a day of salvation today is a time for you to work for Jehovah with greater glory dear brethren think over this issue the wind is blowing too strong. We shall continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, in order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ. That is the moment. Itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for each one. Very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great man is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great man it is to carry Sothon Lagan. And all the word in season and out of season, because of the diamond through my witnesses, where you have been called. The number one diamond through my witnesses in Berlin Trinity, followed by the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond through my witnesses are ears. If there are no ears, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth and accurately handle it, so that not worrying about the softies, but rather looking upon the glory of Jehovah, softies of the people who think they are ecclesiastical displeasure, softies of the people, if I tell like this, I will not get my money. If I tell like this, their fellow believers will be absolutely ostracism, all these things aside. We are living with great God, great Lord. He has provided for us each and everything in eternity past. We need to just obey his word and follow his truth. As we follow his truth and obey his word, he's going to provide for us each and everything that which is really due unto his glory. And he's going to pay us back, you believe it or not. He's going to pay us back before, beyond you can imagine, think, or do whatever exceedingly abundantly because he is the only panta creta. So which way you go, you decide. We shall continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with through the word. We pray that Lord God, the whole spirit, lend us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.